A new storm developing in the west. Details at 10. Tonight, NBC presents a world movie premiere. A wife filled with passion. A husband filled with pride. A son filled with dreams. And a single desperate act can destroy them all. Hello, Suicide Prevention Center. Now, a son's love and courage is a family's only hope. You think I don't know you want to kill yourself? Days of Our Lives, Deidre Hall, Peter Fonda, and Silver Spoon's Ricky Schroeder will touch your heart forever. Dad, don't ever leave me. In the compelling drama, A Reason to Live. Permission granted. Come aboard. Well, Dan, what do you think? Oh, she's beautiful. Gus, thank you very much. Look, I've got a nice Thanksgiving turkey up in the car for you and the wife. Oh, that's wonderful of you, Dan. Thank you. Dolores will appreciate that. Oh, here's the bill. Uh-huh. Bottom paint, boot top, toggles, and a radar. Mm -hmm. We're finished, etc. Now, I had to replace your cutlass bearing, and you needed a new prop. Whoa, whoa, Gus, you're talking about a great deal of money here. Well, I tried to call you. When I couldn't reach you, I went and did it myself. I thought that's what you'd want. Gus, I, I didn't think I needed the prop replaced. I just had it polished a few months ago. It wasn't the polish, Dan. You had a crack running right along the shank. You would have dropped a buck as soon as you backed down hard. I couldn't let her go out like that. Gus, you don't understand. I'm working on a tight budget. I haven't got the cash for something extra like this. Okay, I'll tell you what, Dan. I'll put this part of the bill in my drawer. When you have the money, you can pay it. Oh, I don't know. What are they going to say at the front office? Oh, don't worry about the front office. I'll take care of that. Okay. So, uh, how'd you do Miss Hogan's science test? Okay, I studied just long enough to pass the test. Did you have to dissect the frog? Oh, yes. It was the most grossest experience of my whole life. Did you know Michael asked Jennifer out today? Are you serious? Uh-huh. Oh, I feel so sorry for her. He's such a geek. I know it. He gave her an ID bracelet. Is she gonna wear it? I guess. Oh, she better wash it first. I really feel badly for her. Oh, you gonna go to the baseball yes. game? Okay, bye. Bye-bye. So long.
Sure I will. Yeah, I'll call you Monday. And you'll take care of it. Right, Phil. Right, thanks a lot. Yeah, so long. Alex, hi. Everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's fine, Dad. I'm sorry I called you at work, but they asked me to get in class today. So what can we do it? By Alex. hours on one, and he says it's important. I'm sorry, Alex. I'll have to get back to you. I got an important call. Dick, hi. Uh, what can I do for you? Oh, sure. I'll be right there. I know you're aware of the uh, departmental evaluations we're undertaking. It's that international competition. Yeah, uh, I know. It's that damn economy. No, I know it's tough out there. Yeah, I'm glad in spite of it that my department's been growing. Yes, and we're hoping that you'd be willing to apply that growth philosophy to purchasing. You want me to handle purchasing and new accounts and service? Well, not exactly. We'd like uh, Luther Ryan to take uh, new accounts and service. We'd like you to take purchasing. Luther Ryan? Dick, that's my department. Ryan's just one of my assistants. He's, he's only 27. Yes, that's true, but it's just temporary. There'll be other changes. Oh, come on, Dick. That's a real demotion. Now, what's going on here? What are you guys doing? My customers are happy. Gus, it's the way you do things. Uh, difference in style. It's Dan Hodgins' bill, isn't it? Gus, you don't work for yourself anymore. You haven't been on your own for six years. You can't run a department as if it were your own business. Dan Hodgins is a good customer. A good customer is a customer we make money on. Dick, I've serviced his account since I've worked here. I know the family. The work had to be done. He's good for it. See what I mean? I'm sorry, Gus. You've done this before. We're not a charity. We can't let this continue. Now, how about purchasing? Are you serious? I'm serious. Dick, I know we've had our differences. But this job means a lot to me. How can I take that kind of downgrading? I'm not asking for your resignation, Gus. No. You're just making it impossible for me to stay. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, maybe you're right. terrible about wanting to go home and be with my family. Nothing. It's wonderful. Gus, don't do this to yourself. It's not you. It's them. All they care about is money. They're not interested in anything but the dollar. Not, not the way the customer feels. Not the quality of the work. I'll be fine, Felicia. Just fine.
Stop by, see how you're doing. Dad, did you see my triple? Did I? You were fabulous. Thanks. Yeah. You're out. I gotta go take the field, okay? Did you have to go back? Oh, not today. I'd rather watch you play. Great. Gus, I'm going to need some money this week. I've got to paint the reservations at the lodge. Do you want me to call you at work and remind you? Oh, uh, Monday. Uh, no, no, I'll be at a, a foundry. I'm sorry, look... Maybe I can write you a check. Huh? Yeah. 500 enough? Mm-hmm. You out late? No, I shouldn't be. We're working on the sales for that new condo unit. Yeah, we're eating. The Blue Heron. Oh, uh, the veal from last night is in the icebox. And I got some of those little, uh, little pizza rolls you guys like. I shouldn't be too late. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> hey, Gus. You owe me 450 And you owe Jack over here 310 But I'll tell you what, Gus. We agree to cancel a debt if you agree to spend the money on golf lessons. Uh, <laughs> golf lessons. Uh, yeah. If I got any better, you guys wouldn't play with me. Uh, oh. You dumped Kim Fisher, didn't you? Hey, what are you talking about? I could be Kim Fisher blindfolded. <laughs> Well, then why did you drop him from the foursome? I didn't drop him from the foursome. I'm just simply kidding him about his squeaky golf shoes, so he stomps off the 14th fairway. We haven't seen him since. <laughs> hey, Are you go. ready, my friend? Let's go get something. I love the game. I love it. You okay? Oh, yeah. How'd you do? Lost, naturally. But uh, she breathed hard this time. <laughs> hey. Hey, Gus Stewart. Yeah. Yeah, nice to see you. It's been, what, uh, six, seven years? It must be. How are you doing, Jerry? Hey, you guys know each other, huh? Well, I haven't seen Gus since uh, he left Ryman Motors. Uh, cut back or something, and uh, he was going into business on his own, right? How'd it go? Well, we were in business for two years, then went Chapter 11. <laughs> what happened? Uh, couldn't cut corners is what happened. Boats he built are just too good. That's what happened. Dolores, hi. Does everybody know everybody? Dolores! The most beautiful real estate woman in the state, Dolores Stewart. Hi. Ray Dreyer. Ray, hello. Hi, Ray, Josh Turner. Josh, Josh Tom. Tom, good to see you. Josh Gus Stewart. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, why don't you guys join us? We'll make some room here for you. Don't bother, please. We have to be going. Hey, guys, it was great. Listen, buddy. We got one hell of a team here. Next weekend, we get another crack at these guys. Oh, uh, thanks, Tom, but I can't. I'm going fishing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. There goes my tax loss. <laughs> <laughs> How was your game? All the others loved it, but I got kind of bored. They're not good enough for me. <laughs> Listen to this guy, would you? So you work out of the same office with Dolores, yeah? Right, one of the last of the real old timers. Gus, Josh is alone. And so I asked him to join us on Thanksgiving, if that's all right with you. Sure. Yeah, we'd be glad to have you. Thank you very much. I'd enjoy that. I thought I handled that rather well. Oh, Gus, don't. You know, that was very clever of you, Dolores, inviting Josh in front of everybody just to show there couldn't possibly be anything between you. There isn't anything between us. Oh, there's something between you. Me. Will you stop this? I told you before, I see a lot of Josh because I have to, that's all. Doris, I happen to be in love with you. Then, then give me a little bit of space, please. I want you to stop seeing him. Stop seeing him? How can I do that? We work in the same office. Oh, please don't say you need each other for your work. I want you to uninvite him. 
I'm sorry, I can't do that. That would make things at the office too awkward and too uncomfortable. I got a double, a triple, and a single. It was great. Thanks. Uh, so what's your ass number? I know I'll be away, but I want it anyway. Go. Got it. They just came home. I gotta go, okay? okay bye. bye. Hi. Hi, cute stuff. Mm -hmm. Got two things. City calls? A four, all for me. First, a fly casting lesson. I really gotta have it. Instead of the class going to the yard. I've only asked you ten times. Uh, not yet on the class. Maybe soon on the fly casting. <laughs> Maybe soon? Like when? Soon, kiddo, soon. Dad, if you don't stop calling me kiddo, I'm gonna make myself into a problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, give me a couple of days. How about making that binding with a $10 refundable deposit? <laughs> Great, thank you. for a long time. Why didn't you check with me first? I would have told you not to leave, no matter how unpleasant it gets. All this stuff about the economy expanding, not here. Listen, it's the qualified executive who's in real trouble. Now they want kids who come cheap, who read computers, electronic spreadsheets. It's rough. I couldn't find anything for you now, even if I had to. I can't spend more time with you. But call me next time before you drop in. Dick Byheller, please. Gus Stewart calling. Hey, sir, I'm waiting. Please don't put me on hold too long. I'm at a... No, don't switch me. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I can discuss it with you, although... No, it's okay. What I wanted to say was that I've thought things over and maybe I was a little hasty. I mean, if the purchasing thing were temporary, the way that Dick implied, I could certainly give it a shot at...
you are. I want to eat. Just as soon as everybody arrives. I'm just disappointed that Debbie and John can't be with us. Well, my mother insisted that at least part of the family be with her this Thanksgiving. Can I help you speak to her? No, I'm doing just oh, fine. Mom, you look so pretty today. So do you. <laughs> Debbie got an A in history. She did. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. I wish Alex would do that well. <laughs> I heard that, Granny. You come here, young man. Come here, come on. <laughs> All right, now. How come you don't do better in school, hmm? You're bright, you have a high IQ. Both your parents were good students. Did you know that your father was a top student when he was in college? I'm a jock, Granny. He said that was okay to be. Well, if you say I said it, I said it, but I wish I hadn't. Hey, when are you coming up for a visit, huh? The kids are always asking about you, Alex. They admire you so. <sighs> I don't know why. I'm not that much to be proud of. Ask Granny. Oh, come on now. There's plenty to admire. I'm sorry I took so long. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hello. Hey. hey. You look good, guy. You look good, too, Gus. Well, can I get anyone in anything? I got everything I need, thank you. <laughs> All set. <laughs> I guess we're in pretty good shape then, huh? Oh, I'll get that. Oh, I mean, it's okay, I'll get it. Well, don't I get a kiss? Sure, Mom. Don't watch. <laughs> Oh, aren't those beautiful? Thank you. Come on, to meet my family. Hi, I'd like you all to meet Josh Turner. He works in my office. Josh, this is my sister-in-law, Marion. How do you do, Marion? Hello, Hello, husband, Henry. Hello, Henry. Hi. This is my mother-in-law, Faye Stewart, and of course, my son, Alex. Alex? Hi. You must be the one who taught us so much about real estate. Hello. Miss Stewart, it is a pleasure to meet you. I've heard a lot about how interesting you are from Dolores. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am. <laughs> but unfortunately, only to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Will you excuse me? I'd love to put these in some water. Gus. Uh, do you have a minute? Sure. I hope that you're not embarrassed by this. I, I think Dolores thinks she made a mistake by inviting me. Uh, if you'd like me to leave. I mean, this is a family day, and I don't mind being alone at all. I could make some excuse and get my tail out of here. Whatever you say. Oh, no, forget it. We'd love to have you. Excuse me. Uh, Henry, see if Josh uh, wants something to drink. Sure. Happy Thanksgiving. It's good to see you, Felicia. Oh, it's good to be here. House looks so nice. You look well. Thank you. You too. Uh, Felicia, please don't say anything about what happened at the shipyards, okay? You mean you haven't said anything yet? Well, I haven't been able to. And it's Thanksgiving. I just couldn't. I will. Well, I won't say a word. Thanks. There's something so special about making a turkey. I guess it's the holiday feeling. Dolores, I apologize to Gus. For what? For being here. He had a kind of lost look in his eye. Would you hand the platter over there, please? Maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I should just leave. No. No. Why did you have to turn out to be so nice? Alex! Augustus, will you please discipline that retrograde son of yours before I kick him under the table? <laughs> hey, Alex, put down your fork. Now, Gus, please give us a good grace this year. Last year's was much too brief. I mean, after all, God's been very good to this family. I think grace should be simple. I mean, if I were God, I'd like that best. I think it's just as well you're not God. <laughs> yes. All right, everybody. <clears throat> Dear God, for thy bounty, we thank thee. And for the beauty in which you have entrusted us, we thank thee. We thank thee for this life and hope and for this peaceful moment. We thank thee for those whom we love and for
for those who love us in return and to make our make our lives worth living and it's only through those we love and who love us that we learn about ourselves and through that about thee we're children whose only reality is each other I that's Alex, I'm all right. You know me, sometimes I get a little too sentimental. I, I just needed to have a moment alone. Come on, mister, let's go back down. because it didn't mean anything. He was just so apologetic about being there that I was touched. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I can. Gus, what about you? You left the table in the middle of grace without a word of explanation. I mean, really, we had a room full of death. Dolores, that has nothing to do with it. I'm talking about commitment, trust, and loyalty. Trust and loyalty and commitment don't mean much if you're not living the life you want. Well, that's a bedrock statement. That doesn't leave much room for anything but ultimatums. Next thing you'll see is you want to split up. Gus, maybe we should think about that. It's not you, and it's not me. It's us together. It just isn't working. Well, it is for me. Dolores, I'm still in love with you. But what happened to us? I thought you loved me. I was crazy about you. We were kids when we got married. But I'm not that person now. Well, what changed? I don't know what changed me, Gus. Maybe life changed me. Maybe you did. Me? Not tonight. Please, no more. You bet.
arguing up. It's after two o'clock in the morning. You guys woke me up. Why are you and Mom fighting like that? That's not fighting, son. That's disgusting. Now, you go back to bed. It's much too, it's much too late for you. Mr. B.E.D. Are you sleeping down here tonight? I don't know. Maybe. Alex, it's the middle of the night. Is that your will? Alex, this does not concern you. Now, will you please go back to bed? I can't sleep. Lock me up? decided not to go. Don't you think this might be a good time to tell him? Someone can take you with us. Can you give me a hand in the attic? Yeah, sure. gerbil and hamster cages, some roller skates and ice skates, war uniforms and silver nears. It's not here. Well, what? My dad's 45 from the Army. He was here yesterday when I was getting our stuff ready. Well, maybe he took her along to have some target practice with you. Yeah. Just for the trip. Who's that guy? His lawyer. I guess I better go. Oh, okay, I'll call you when I get back. See ya. What's wrong? You have him just for the trip. Well, I promised you a lesson, didn't I? All right. Great.
Josh? Hi, I just thought I'd let you know that Gus isn't going on the trip. No, no, just Alex and me. Well, it's hard on both of us. I really do need this time away. Yeah, sure I will. Okay. Bye-bye. I'm not going fishing tonight. That's why I haven't changed yet. I, I've got work I have to do here. But, Dad, we've been planning this trip for such a long time. I know. Well, what happened? What came up all of a sudden? Uh, my departmental budgets. I have to do them. And in order to do them right, I have to be alone. You have to be alone for three whole days? Alex, I'll be working at the office and I'll be late every night. You know, you've seen me go through this before. Dad, I don't want to fish with Mom. I want to fish with you. I can't do it. Dad, it's not going to be the same if you're not there. Please come, please. Can't you do it late at night or, or give it to somebody else? Dad, I don't want to fish with anybody else but you. Listen, Alex, once you're up there, you'll find someone else to fish with. It'll be real fun. Here, take it back. If this is mine, you'll never go fishing again. I know you. Mom bought this for you, for you to fish with. And if I take it, you'll never fish again. You'll never buy yourself another one. Alex, the rod is yours. I want you to have it. No! Please, change your mind. I'll do anything. I'm sorry, Alex. I'd never do this to my kid. Well, so long, Gus. Everything will work out for the best, you know. Yep. You take care of yourself? Yeah, you too. Take this for me. There you go.
sure you want to go? Of course I want to go. We're going, aren't we? Without him? Sweetie, Dad was the one who didn't want to go on this trip, not me. I know, but something's the matter. Nonsense. Mom, please stop, please. I don't want to go. I'm worried about him. I want to stay home with him. Oh, Alex, come on. Don't spoil this trip. We're going to have fun together. You don't even like trout fishing. What would you do home alone, huh? What if Dad really is very busy? I don't know. I can call Ellen. Mom, I think he's going to miss me. He doesn't like to admit it. Okay. Alex, listen to me. You are too smart and you're too grown up for me not to tell you that your daddy and I are having some problems. And I really need to get away. But if you feel that you want to stay here and be alone with him, I don't have a problem with that. Matter of fact, I'll even try and catch a big fish. Thanks. Hey, how about a kiss, huh? You bet. you a lot. I love you too. but he hasn't worked here in over a week. Listen, I know he's in there. If he's not in his office, he's out in the yard taking inventory. Now, I've got to talk to him. Look, I'm sorry, but I can't let you through. I've can't got to find him! Hey, hey!
Talk about his father? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bob Cousins. Hi. Come on. Would you like to tell me your name? Alex Stewart. How about your address and phone number, Alex? You don't have to if you don't want to. We'll still help you. Five 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 six two one two. Four six oh one Fairview. Mm-hmm. Why you, Alex? I mean, why is it you who's here who's so concerned? What about the rest of your family? They're all away. Your mother's away? Yeah. Why do you think your father might be thinking about killing himself? about things. I, I, I don't know why. I'm, excuse me for crying. I, I know him. And, and you love him. Yeah. See, my, my mom and dad, they've been fighting a lot lately. And a few nights ago, my, my dad went out in the middle of the night in his pajamas and he stared up at the stars. And when he came back inside, he looked at his will. And then he slipped down in the den, and he has this old 45 from the army, and he, and he keeps it upstairs in the attic, and it's not there anymore. So, so I went to where he works, and they told me he doesn't work there. And then he, he, gave me, he just gave me his $400 fly rod for nothing. He, he loves it more than anything. And I was supposed to go on this trip, and, and when I said goodbye to him, he hugged me so hard that it hurt. And I got scared, and I didn't want to go. And then I found this number in the den, and I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. I could be wrong, couldn't I? What's your father's name and age, Alex? Augustus Stories, 42. Alex. Don't you think you ought to call someone else in your family? Even if they don't live nearby. My, my dad doesn't like when I tell other people our problems. So when they call, they get really upset. Plus, they don't know him like I do. I don't have to call him, do I? No. No, the best thing would be if we could get your mother involved. Do you think you could get a message to her and have her call me? Well, she's driving up to the wilderness. Isn't there something we can do right now? Say she doesn't get my message. How about someone else? Someone not family who really cares for him and might be able to help? I don't know. Would you excuse me for a minute, Alex? We don't normally do this, but under the circumstances, I'm going to break a rule for you.
No one by that name has called. Oh, good. That doesn't mean he hasn't called. Sometimes people don't use their right names. His having our phone number isn't necessarily a bad sign, you know. It could be a good sign. Could mean he wants help. And he wants to be talked out of feeling so badly. But we don't want to take any chances, do we? Okay. The center can't inject itself into a situation like this without being asked by the person who's troubled. And that's not because of some arbitrary rules. That's because we've learned that if we call first, we can't be as helpful as if the person calls us first. Do you understand that? Do you know what that means? No. That means for right now, it's all up to you. Me? What can I do? I think you could say something like, Dad, I love you and I'm worried about you. I know you lost your job and I think it's making you depressed and maybe you should talk to someone. <laughs> Alex, don't you think you could say just that much just to get him started? I know him. He, he, he wouldn't start. He'd just clam right up. Plus he gets sore at me. And, and you're right, if someone like you called, he'd just lie and say everything was fine. Why does he feel so bad? Why does he want to kill himself? What's so bad? Alex, any time a man loses a job he's invested years in, there can be suicidal ideas. That's not uncommon. And when there are personal problems, that just increases the pressure. Do you like pineapple juice? Yeah. People try so hard to do what's right all their lives, and then one day it just seems like it's too hard to keep on trying, you know? There you go. Alex. I'm going to be truthful with you. From what you've told me, from all the clues you've given me, I think you may be right. Your father may be thinking about suicide. Maybe seriously, maybe not. But only he knows that. And that's why it's so very, very important for you to get him to talk. See, I get him upset and he leaves and goes someplace and I can't find him. Well, at the moment all we can do is try, right? I'm just a phone call away, Alex. So if you feel that things aren't going very well, you pick up that phone and call me right away. How do I know if things aren't going well? There are uh, certain signs that we look for. Loss of appetite. Sleeplessness. Yeah. Sudden mood changes, depression, drinking, anxiety over the loss of a loved one. You mean like somebody dying? Yes, or someone you love who leaves you. <clears throat> I, I better go now. Just a minute. Call me any time, day or night. Try to stay calm, Alex. I have confidence in you. You'll do the right thing. Loss of a loved one? So, what about it? You don't know what people are saying about your mom? No. My parents say that your mom is having this love affair with this guy in her office. Serious. No, no, that's garbage. I mean, my, my parents may be getting these arguments, have these fights once in a while, but she really loves him. What's the matter? I don't feel good. You, you mean sick? You want to get off and go to a bathroom or a drugstore or something? No, I've got to get home. I don't have time.
Alex. What are you doing here? Hi, Dad. Guess what? I decided not to go with Mom. I decided I'd keep you company. Where is your mom? Did she go on up to the lodge alone? Yeah, she said she needed a rest. So, what are you doing with all that stuff? Don't be nosy, Alex. I'm sorry. Do you think after you get all that work done, we could catch a little hardball or do some more fly casting? Maybe. Is there anything I can help you with here? No, thank you. The key to the strong box is in my top. Alex, cut it out, will you? Now, there's lots of things I have to do here by myself. Go out of the lawn. I, I don't want to have to think about you right now. Uh, okay, I'll, I'm, I'll be quiet. If you don't want to think about me, how come you're looking at pictures of me? I remember when this was taken. When Granny bought those lovebirds to hang near my crib. You can't possibly remember that. But I do, I swear it. I remember my crib and those birds. How old was I there? Fifteen months. I remember. Is this fun having a baby? Alex, you're annoying me. Dad? Dad, I've got to talk to you about something. Not now! No, I'm sorry I yelled at you, Alex. It's just that I have all this to do and... Please. Well, now what is it? What's wrong with your face? I've got something in my eye. All right, come over here. Come on. Let's have a look. Kneel down. Let's take a look. Look over there. That way. Look the other way. I've never seen this picture before. There's so many X's on the back. Who was she? There's nothing in your eye. Thanks. The lawn, Alex. Okay, I'll go, but first tell me who she was. Someone I met in college. You liked her, I can tell. Well, I just hope that when you go to college, you meet someone as nice as she. Honest? Was she really that great? What was her name? Come on, Dad, you can tell me. I'm a guy. I'm not too young. You said you wanted me to meet somebody like her. Isabel Bennett. Did you love her before you met Mom? Yes. Did she love you? I guess. Well, then what happened to her? I'm not sure. For all I know, she still lives here. Alex, the lawn. I mean it, out. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Well, you keep saying that, but you're not moving. I'm moving, I'm moving. I went to where you worked today. The guy at the gate told me you lost your job. So, what's a job? It's just another job. Who cares about a job? I'd still love you if you never found another job for the rest of your life. So would Mom. Alex, why did you do this? Do what? Come back. I mean, you're really in my way. Then after the lawn, I, I could do my homework, okay? Okay. Alex. Alex. This isn't going to work out. I'm going to put you on a flight. Tonight. I'll call your uncle and you can spend the rest of the weekend with your cousins. No, I can't! Then I can't! Alex, you'll do as I tell you. Now go upstairs and pack a bag. What about the lawn and my homework? Alex, upstairs and pack a bag. Move it! Move it! Okay! Okay! Okay!
Mr. Dreyer, hi, this is Alex Stewart, Gus's son. Alex, how are you? Fine, thanks. You? I was, uh, I was hoping maybe we could give my dad a, a call today. You see, I didn't go on a trip and he's kind of depressed and he thinks he has to babysit for me and he's all worried about his work, you see? And my, my mom's not here and he's depressed, you know? You could? Great, great, thank you. Bye. Yes. Oh, all right. Now this door's spot open. Oh. No. No, thanks anyway, Ray. Well, that's very kind of you to think of me, but, uh... I'm swamped with work. I'll have to stick it out here. Well, next weekend? Sure. Why not? You too, Ray. about something. Come in. It's almost time to take you to the airport. Dad, may I be excused, please? Sure. Me too? Sure. Birthday? What's the matter with you? It's nice. What do you know? We even baked you a cake. An orange chocolate cake. Orange chocolate. I know it's not your birthday, but they said they didn't care. Happy not your birthday. Isabel. Isabel, you look fantastic. This is incredible. How did this happen? 
Well, Alex and I ran into each other, didn't we, Alex? Yeah. And we decided that you ought to have a party. He's having fun. Yes. Well, now we've got to find the gun. How did Alex find you? Well, actually, he looked me up in the book. I go by my maiden name. He said he wanted to give you a surprise party. I didn't know until I got here that the surprise was me. <laughs> You're not married? Oh, two and a half times plenty. Man, it'd have to be crazy to let you go. You did. Isn't that a crazy thing? I don't know. I mean, how did he even know about me? Oh, I was... I was going through some of my papers. And he saw your picture. He asked about you. You know, he asked me in a way that made me feel that I ought to come. Oh, no. You came because you wanted to see how much hair I had left. <laughs> well, I must admit, I was curious to see you. Of course, I didn't care what you thought I'd look like. I only changed my clothes three times before I left the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to think about you all the time. You know, I, I dreamed about you for years. Oh, me too. We should have gotten married. Oh, are you nuts? <laughs> it never would have lasted. I was too crazy in those days. Do you like what you do? Yes. I love research and I love to travel. I get to do a lot of both. What a time for you to come back into my life. Wow. Well, it's obviously a good time. You have done very well. Gus, are you all right? I don't know. Is it your marriage? It's everything. Nothing seems to work, you know. I, last week I lost my job, and I don't even care. It's all so meaningless. A couple of days ago I was driving, stopped at a red light, and I wished that it would never change. Gus, I don't want to hear you talk like this. You do care. You have always cared. You're probably caring so much you can't see clearly. Believe me, give it time. Things will straighten out. You'll make it through this. I know you will. You still have all those great qualities that you had in college. You're a wonderful guy. Sensitive. Caring. getting late. Oh, Isabel. The last thing in the world I want to do is make you feel uncomfortable. But please. Don't go. I have to. I promised Ellen I'd give her a ride. It's been wonderful seeing you. I've loved this little party at when it comes time for your real birthday, I'll be thinking nothing but just the best thoughts for you. Nothing.
I'll make sure to get her back safely. Thanks. Call me tomorrow, okay? Okay. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Oh, that's right, Ellen. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. There's another plane out at 10.35. I'm putting you on it. Dad. What was this? inviting Isabel? I thought it might make you feel good to see one of your friends after all these years. Dad, are you mad at me? Uh, are you trying to tell me something, Alex? What do you mean? Well, like maybe I ought to start looking around for somebody else. Dad, you really are crazy. Mom loves you. Oh, cut it out, Alex. Dad, I know she does. I know she loves you. You know what they say about kids. You can't fool them. Sure, maybe she gets sore at you once in a while, but she doesn't mean it. She loves you. We all love you. Well, I'll drink to that. Me too. What are you doing, mister? Having a drink with my old man. To mom. A lady who thinks she knows where it's at, but has got two guys way ahead of her. You gotta drink to that. I'll drink to that. And to my dad, who's a great guy. And to this kid who's gonna whip him in golf within a year. That'll be the day. Again, to us, to the old block and the chip. Come on, drink, Dad. Drink. <laughs> you think I don't know that you're trying to hustle me? Trying to get me smashed so I can't drive you to the airport, huh? Me? Hustle you? You kidding? Wait, just wait one second. Have you lost your mind? That's a good bottle of wine. And you're pouring it on top of that other stuff that's already in there. Haven't you learned anything from me? Yeah, what I wanted to say was a toast to Mom. Another one, huh? Yeah, to her safe return. Okay. You always say you want me to be fine, right? You want me to be understanding, reliable, meticulous. Yes or no? Yeah. Well, I swear on the head of my neck is it to keep my room neat. I swear to wear a tie out to dinner, get haircuts and request, clean the tub, bring in the garbage, uh, and bring in the paper. <laughs> How about watering the lawn? Water, you want it, you've got it. <laughs> in that case, here's to you. Great! <laughs> mm. Something we both forgot, my music lessons. You think they're a total wipeout, right? Right. Well, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Are you ready for this? I'm not quite sure. Well, get ready. is dedicated to Augustus Stewart. sure about talent, but you got guts, mister. A uh, customer. Well, um, maybe I should have something else besides hard-boiled eggs. Do you serve crabs here? Waiter, we serve anybody. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Okay. <laughs> you win. You don't have to go. Great! Thanks! I love you! Thank you! <laughs> mm. 
Come on, let's go upstairs and get some sleep. But first, we get the dining room lights. Dining room lights. Dining room lights. When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now, will you still be sending me a ballet time? First day, three, two, a bottle of wine. terrible about the way we said goodbye. Uh, do I see you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, Gus. I was just thinking about what I wanted to say and, you know, the best way to say it. I don't guess there is the best way to say it. Well, maybe you shouldn't say it then. I'm not coming back, Gus. I know 
just from the short time that I've been gone, that I can't. I mean, I can't come back right now. Even if I did, I wouldn't really be there. Because, look, I know that you won't move out. So I'm going to. I know this isn't a good time to say this, but I don't think there's going to be a good time. Because you can't be surprised by this. Dolores, are you alone? Talk to me! 
Captain, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Nothing. Never mind. Just leave me alone. You think I'm a money? You want to kill yourself? I may not be great grades, Dad, but I'm not dumb and I can figure things out. So you hate yourself and you hate your life. Well, I hate myself, too. We all hate ourselves sometimes. Is that any reason to kill yourself? You're not the only one who wants to commit suicide? Tom Brokaw in Geneva, where the nuclear arms talks between Secretary of State Schultz and Soviet Foreign Minister Gromyko are underway. The whole world is watching. The story tomorrow on NBC Nightly News.